Monday night Knicks special episode of Knicks Fan TV Live presented by Manscaped. CP the franchise checking in. Joining me tonight, tonight's guest, we got KnicksFanTV.com's own Alex Rotaro, a Tratacaster in the building, and the newest edition of KnicksFanTV.com, also writes for Hoops Habit, also has his own Knicks podcast as well, Chip Murphy. Chip, how you doing, man? Welcome aboard, bro. I'm great, CP. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, absolutely. Welcome to the team. And, uh, you know, tonight's episode, we're going to do two things. Number one, we're going to touch on more of the Sexton trade rumors. We did uh, talk about it earlier last week with uh, Evan Damarell from Locked on Cavs. So we want to get more fan reactions uh, to the Sexton trade rumors. And Chip, you also wrote an article, your debut article for uh, KnicksFanTV.com on the Sexton rumors. So let, let's pick it up right there, man. What did, you, what did you think when you heard about it? And what do you think the Knicks should do uh, as, as, uh, as far as Colin Sexton is concerned? Well, when I heard about it, I was actually like surprised that uh, he was even available. I didn't think that he would be a, so readily available because he, you know, he just averaged 24 points a game. And then I figured when I saw his name linked to the Knicks, I was like, uh, I don't know about this because I figured, you know, they'd ask for like quickly or Mitch. And then I was like, why are so many people out on this so quickly? Because then I saw Obi Toppin, Kevin Knox. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm in. Yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> let's, I, look, I I love Obi Toppin as much as as much as the next guy. Yeah, I, I really love him, but he plays the same position as Julius Randle, so that that makes him much more tradable than anybody else uh, that I just mentioned quickly or or Mitch. So, but as far as getting Sexton on the team, I know people are nervous about getting a new player especially when you have to pay him so quickly. But look, just because he's due for a max extension doesn't mean you have to pay him that. You know, not not everybody's going to get the $160 million contract they deserve or that they think they deserve. Now, as far as how Colin Sexton can help the Knicks, though, he is extremely aggressive. He was top 10 in the league in drives per game this year. He was, we know Tibbs loves that in a point guard. Tibbs kind of guy. Exactly. That's why Alfred Payton started this year. And as far as Tibbs kind of guys, he is an incredible worker. If you look up stuff about his work ethic, he was an unrated recruit after his junior year in high school. Like no one knew who he was. And he worked so hard to like his workouts were like three hours long. He went to skills workouts. He couldn't leave until he made 300 jump shots. Like there's, if you look it up, his high school workouts are insane and he works out just as hard now. And he turned himself into a lottery pick and Cavs fans have all these stories about how he's, you know, that's his thing. Like he works out really hard and he's improved in the league. He really has gotten better. And I I just think he would help the Knicks a lot. You know, the, uh, like I wrote in the, the piece is, the Knicks offense is terrible. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, they just need guys who can put the ball in the basket. Yeah. And that's what Colin Sexton does. He scores. And look, I, I know what people, are, what people are saying, good stats, bad team guy. Yeah. I get, I get that that's the knock on him right now, but he averaged 24 points a game, 47% shooting. Yeah. Like it was a small three point clip, but he shot 40% on catch and shoot threes every one of his three years in the league. So he's proven he can shoot the ball off the catch. I mean, there's a big enough sample size. The one thing I will say he hasn't proven yet is that he can shoot off the the three off the dribble. He still needs to show that. But he's proven he can shoot the three off the catch. He's proven he's a really legit mid-range shooter, especially pull-up mid-range. That would give the Knicks, him and RJ, two legit mid-range options there. And Julius, obviously, too. But yeah, I and I think he's really came into his own this year as a passer, not not came into his own, but he improved this year as a passer. And I think he can get better. And obviously, the one that sticks out is the defense. Yeah. And I wrote this like if you make this trade, you're betting big on tips and this coaching staff and Johnny Bryant that they can get the most out of Colin Sexton. 
and maybe the most important part of all of this, he's 22. He's t- there's a lot of guys in this draft who are older than him. Like you, there's still plenty of time for him to get better. Like it, it, there's yeah. just so much potential there. I feel like you can get a lot out of him, especially a guy like who has the reputation of Johnny Bryant and the empty stats uh, players. We used to say things like that about Devin Booker. You know, we used to say things like that about Julius hey, Randle. We said it about Julius. We yeah. said it about Julius. Ju- Ju- Just Julius Randle, last year we were killing his year. defense. Yeah. yeah. Killing his yeah. defense. When he was when he was with New Orleans, people were saying, like, well, oh, what what does it really matter that he's doing this? Yeah. You know, he, he's on the court with Anthony Davis. And uh, I I just you put him, I'd like to see him with better players before we start writing him off. Yeah. And yeah, I, his metrics are terrible. His metrics are absolutely yeah. terrible. I get that. But and somebody somebody on Twitter was pointing out like his his box score plus minus for his career. Everyone look it up. Everyone on the Cavs for the last three years has had atrocious <laughs> box score plus <laughs> minus. This is They've the been Cavs the worst team about. in the league yeah. the last three years. Yeah. So don't let that sway you on him. OK, just don't let that sway you on him. Uh, yo, Al, man, Chip, Chip's debut on X-Fan TV, he's dropping <laughs> nothing but bars right now, nothing but facts. Yo, man, he is, he is going off. Yeah, my, I'm, first of all, ahead, Chip, Al, you got to be my attorney if I'm ever in trouble, man. I, you will kinda, set me scot-free. I fell in love with this kid, okay? I really you, like him. You know what it is? You know what it is, fellas? Listen, I'm, I'm liking a lot of Knicks fans. It's, it's the PTSD of making terrible trades in our past. You know, blowing big money on guys that are completely average or or don't live up to the hype. We got PTSD, man. The last twenty years has shown that it, it's hard to to come around on these things. But you know, you made a lot of you made a lot of good points, Chip. And and you, what you're saying is, do do we bet on Tibbs? And does he deserve the, the benefit of the doubt? This is the coach of the year. We didn't think Julius was going to come around. He has. We had no clue that this Nick defense was, was going to play up to uh, the, the way that they did this year, being at the top of the league mo- consistently. A- and he's shown that. And as you said, 22 years old, I mean, now that, that, that might be a risk we have to take, man. That, that might be a risk we have to take. 24 points per game. Listen, I, I, I see a lot of question marks in, in his game. You know what I mean? I still think, yes, him being a, a nice score at all three levels for sure. I still feel like, you know, we got to be able to still emphasize ball movement in this line. It was too, it was too ISO dependent. Uh, and I thought that's where this offense definitely got stuck. And also defensively, you know, being a 6-1 combo guard, you know, how, how does he, you know, hold it down defensively against, obviously, all the dogs of the league are, are mainly on the perimeter. You know, does Tibbs find ways to protect him? Is RJ going to do some of the dirty work? Will Mitch be there to kind of cover up some of his mistakes if they make that trade? But um, it, it might be a risk we have to take, man. I don't know. What, what's, what's your take, Sal? I would take that risk, honestly, because I think you got to look at what you're trying to – who who are we drafting? If it's that package, Kevin Knox, Obi Toppin, and the 19th pick, well, we already know what Knox is to a certain degree, and this is his last year of his contract. So if you're planning on extending him, which I don't, I don't, it doesn't seem like the Knicks may do just based on his, on his performances the last couple of years. So I don't see that happening. Now we're talking about Obi Toppin. Sure. There's untapped potential, but who's in the same position that he's playing Julius Randle. So unless you think that he's going to get 15 to 20 minutes every single night and Julius Randle's, you know, still gonna get his, his same amount of time that he earned this past season. We know Tibbs likes to play his best guys, the most minutes. So unless you're thinking Tibbs can play some small ball five, with either Randall or Toppin, you know, that's that's a gamble you're trying to take. And then on top of that, what do you expect from the 19th pick this season? Right. You know, are you expecting to get a good role player? Because if that's the that's the case, we don't know what the 19th pick can be. You know, and we're not we can't use past drafting. It's a different front office. We got Scott, we got uh, Walt Perrin, you know, we got a bunch of different guys in the office now who, as we've seen from Emmanuel quickly, hit a home run with him. Obi Toppin, he showed weight into the season, especially when the playoffs came. But taking a but gambling on the 19th pick to be just a role player is what you're really hoping for, right? That's the bar. Just that hopefully a pick can just be a useful role player. If you get someone who's transcendent, then you hit. That's a home run hit. You know, finding like a Giannis, finding someone like a Clay Thompson, finding Steph Curry later in the round. So any one of those guys, that's a home run hit. That's very far and few between. So if you can get a good role player like Cam Johnson, like Mikhail Bridges, if that's what you want, okay. But 
Colin Sexton, 24 points per game when this team, when we were in the playoffs, we didn't have anyone Needed score. on the perimeter who was, who was score. a scoring threat. Yeah. We had Rose, That's but, a, we had Rose like but he, he just couldn't hold up. You know what I mean? He, we had yeah. Rose and he just couldn't hold up. Yeah, 25 minutes per game, and we saw what happened afterwards. It was tired. Like, he, don't get me wrong, admirable job by D. Rose. He held he held it down for the team every single game he was on the court. Yeah. But outside of that, we didn't have anyone else. Reggie Bullock wasn't giving us anything. R.J. Barrett yeah, was kind of quiet during the, that series. Alec Burks had one game for us, really. Maybe, yeah, maybe a game and a half. Yeah. And then Emmanuel quickly didn't see anything until the last game, really. So getting a 24-point per game score, it, it sounds like, sure, you could say empty stats. Sure, you could say, well, he's doing on a bad team. 24 points is 24 points. That is something – not everyone can score 24 points on a bad team, okay? We saw guys who, who couldn't do it on a nightly basis on a bad team. So, Colin Sexton, I would take the gamble. I would take the risk. I think you're – like you said earlier, we're, we're betting on uh, Tibbs being a, a, a heavy influence. You're, you're betting on Johnny Bryant uh, to really – Grassman to do what he did for Donovan Mitchell and for Damian Lillard, you know, yep. and I guess the, the, the other concern is, do you have to pay him? Right. You know, we got Brock Auer in the, in the room. So if he knows something from being with the Cavs that we don't, maybe he knows that the market for Colin Sexton is that he's not going to get a max. I don't think he would get a max personally. Usually guys who like, I, I want to put him up there with like a Devin Booker, because if they're considering even moving him, then it's, then it's, he's not a max player. If he, if they knew they wanted him, they would have paid him like they did Devin Booker, like they offered for Donovan Mitchell, like they offered for a lot of other guys. So if they're questionable, I don't think that's going to be the market for him. I, so if I'm the Knicks, I would take that gamble though. Yeah, I, I think I think Chip the, the price. Let, let's talk about the price trade wise and and um, and salary wise. Right, he still has one more year left on his deal. Now what the experts are saying is that he could be he's eligible. For the rookie max extension, which would be five years, one hundred and sixty-eight million dollars. If that's what he's looking for, I'm saying no thanks. But that you know that that's what he's eligible for. I don't. I, obviously, the Cavs don't want to give him that, but that's what he's eligible for. In terms of the trade package, though, just the rumored parameters of the deal, right? You know. On one end, you look at it, you know, from the Cleveland fan, you look at what the Cleveland fans are saying. They're saying there's no way we take that deal. You know, he's worth way more than that. Give me a break. You know, Cleveland deserves more than that. He's 24 point per game scorer. But on the other hand, I'm thinking the fact that you have to one trade for a quote unquote, you know, question mark in some areas and then have to pay him. I'm not so sure the market is as large as, you know, what Cleveland may be putting it out there to be. I think a lot of this could be smoke from Cleveland trying to increase his market value because I'm not so sure there's a lot of teams that will want to. And I, I just froze. I'm not so sure there's a lot of teams that will want to uh, – hang on. Hang tight. All right. Should be back up and running right now. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. All right. Should be back up and running right now. Testing, one, two, three. Technical difficulties. The uh, the system is malfunctioned, but uh, we're back up and running. So as I was saying, Chip, on the price um, – just seems like, you know, based on the fact that you got to trade for him and, he, and he's a question mark and the fact that, you know, then you have to pay him. I'm, I'm not so sure the market for him is, is going to be that steep. So the Knicks could be in an advantageous situation just in terms of the leverage that they may have in a trade. And then as far as the trade parameters, you know, obviously I'm not looking to, to push OB out the door, but I've always felt like the, the whole OB Randall thing just really didn't make much sense. I always thought that it had to be one or the other. I just don't feel like you're going to be able to maximize on Obi's talents and, and, and maximize on that asset by bringing him off the bench for 10 to 12 minutes a night. I just don't see that happening. We haven't seen Tibbs go with these guys in a small ball lineup together at all. In your article, you mentioned uh, a total of 85 possessions that, that yeah. these guys have played with. So I just feel like a trade like that maybe what the Knicks need to do to improve this team because I don't see these saviors coming here, the dames, the bookers and all that. That I don't see that happening, man. I think this, this might be the type of move that the Knicks might have to make to improve this roster. Yeah, it's like one of the first moves that starts it off, like to start off what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. like he's a guy that maybe could they could flip at a later date or maybe could even be part of the future. Yeah, if he does improve to what I, I think he's – capable of being like he's he's a really special talent i think and as far as the price though i think 
like I think you hit it on the head with Obi Toppin. I think he is going to be a really good player, but he was drafted to be something that he's not capable of being anymore because he's he can't start on this team because the player ahead of him, Julius Randle, is an all NBA player. So, I mean, I just, there's no path to minutes. Like Julius Randle, Alex said earlier, Julius Randle's going to lead the league or finish in the top three in minutes again next year. And Tibbs is not a guy who's going to play small ball, really. I mean, he likes to have a, a rim protector on the court. And I don't think that's ever going to be Obi. You know, and I don't think playing Julius at the small ball five is smart when he already has to work so hard on yeah. offense. I, I don't want to see him take a beating against opposing centers. I don't like that idea. So, yeah, I I just don't see a path for the minutes for Obi. And that like, as far as giving up the pick, are you going to draft a guy at 19 or 21 who in three or four years is going to be better than Con Sexton is right now? What are the odds of that? Pretty slim, right? Al, uh, what, what you what you take on the on the rumored price paying Sexton? What, what do you think about that? The rumored price of uh, paying, like for what the draft capital? Yeah, I or mean, I, think, I like... mean, just based on the you know the rumored deal in terms of right now, I'm saying you know Kev Ob probably nineteen, maybe twenty one. You know, what are you thinking about that? What do you think about just just you know trading Ob and say a pick, right? Because Kev right now. You know, nobody's really interested. <laughs> and just just to be real, that's my guy. That's my guy. But I love you know, him. Like just, yeah. He's like I a like great guy. Too. He yeah. really does. It's just yeah, a name it, right now. It's an unfortunate situation for Knox, especially with that second year not playing out to his favor where his minutes were reduced and just a lot of – it was just a mess. Honestly, just a mess. But I think yeah. if we're trading Obi and a pick, which is essentially the deal for Colin Sexton, you got to do it because – I think we're we're just we we're allude, we're not even just alluding to it, we're just saying it. It's that Julius Randle's here. I don't see Julius Randle taking a step back in the production that we saw this past season. I don't think it's a fluke. Do I think he can average the same numbers that he did? Maybe you're not going to get 41 percent again from three. Maybe it goes down to 38. It might drop in some areas. It might increase. Who knows? But it's not going to be so far away where it's just holy cow. We made a complete mistake on Julius Randle. He is just back to being the way that he was. I do not expect that to happen. And because of that, I think if you want to like, if you were going to capitalize on what OB's potential is, there's still some like, a, like war to what OB could be as a player, what we saw in college. Yeah. So I think moving him now makes most sense. If you don't see him getting major minutes on this team or being a, you know, like a true core piece or getting just anything where he's going to have a substantial role on this team. If he's just destined to be, you know, a 10, 15 minutes guy, then what, what are we doing here with Obi? Might as well just move and try to capitalize on the value that he has and get a guy who can help the backcourt because that's where we're lacking right now. RJ doesn't have it in his bag yet. We know he's going to work with Drew Hanlon on uh, off the dribble shooting, mm -hmm. but still that's something that's going to, be, going to be a little bit more of a difficult trade if you're not naturally used to it to work on. So why not get a guy who can do all of that, who is efficient in the mid range, who sure he's not, uh, he doesn't shoot high volume from three, but he can hit the three at a good rate. And then he gets you 24 points per game. And if you want to talk about driving to the basket, D Rose and Alfred Payton, I think it was Alfred Payton that had 10 points some odd uh, drives to the basket. D Rose is probably up around between 11 to uh, or 12 Colin Sexton's close to 17 drives to the basket. If you want a guy that's truly like Tibbs guy, 17 drives to the basket, just puts com constant pressure. Who's quick and agile on the rim. I mean, that's that it's there. It's right there. And I think, you know, we saw him improve a little bit on his passing. He's not necessarily the greatest playmaker, but he can get used. He got four assists. He definitely knows how to move the ball around and he could have gotten more. The Cavs aren't necessarily a good team overall, as Chip pointed out. They didn't really shoot well. He's passing the guys who couldn't knock down their shots on a consistent basis. So it could have been a little bit more. Am I saying he's the best playmaker? No, but he's going to get, he's going to find guys because he's just going to draw that much attention. But I know, I understand the concerns. I understand that we don't know if he's going to be the point guard. He's undersized as a combo guard. You know, who's going to be working next to him to be the true facilitator? You know, the, the, these are all other questions. And those are all that, like honest concerns if getting for getting Colin Sexton. But at the same time, I think what Chip said is also right. If you want to be that team that's just moving in the right direction, we can't keep waiting. You know, we can't keep waiting for that no. free agent to come. And I, and I think that at least we can make one move to go in that right direction. 
And uh, as you said, the drives are there. He's he's a Tibbs guy, like Chips like Chips said earlier when we started the show. Why, why do you think he's stuck with Peyton? You know, for damn near the whole year. And and part of it is because, like it or not, he he got to the basket at will. Everything else was a train wreck, but. You know, that that's the type of point guard that Tibbs wants. He wants a guy that's going to put some pressure on the defense. You know, D-Rose came in and, and did the same thing. Um, uh, another thing with Sexton that you got to like, he finished better at the rim than anybody that the Knicks have on the roster right now. He's about 60% at the rim, which is a bit refreshing considering RJ and Julius uh, were in the low 50s, and, and that definitely didn't get it done. And um, shooting foul draw rate, 90th percentile among combo guards, you know, according to Cleet in the Glass. So he's a guy that is going to draw that contact, not afraid of the contact. And so, you know, I think that'll definitely help us as it pertains to getting to the free throw line as well. So it's, it's a lot to like, obviously some, some, uh, some concerns there as well, but we'll see what happens, man. See what happens in the coming weeks. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP Alex for Tauros, Chip Murphy in here. We got the Knicks fan TV squad in the building. Call us up. Let us know what you guys think about, uh, the Sexton rumors, uh, six, five, seven, three, eight, three, one, five, zero, nine. We also have the Knicks fan TV discord that is open to the fans. And we're going to go to the discord right now. Cause, um, my guy Fredo did not get in the last time. So let's get him in right now. Fredo, you, you're live and direct, bro. How you doing, man? How you doing, gentlemen? Thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is my thing. Mm -hmm. I would be really happy if the Knicks got Sexton. But my thing is, when I hear you guys describing him, what I really hear is you guys talking about my boy IQ. You yeah, know, we're gonna, I hear, we're gonna I hear get to a IQ lot in a second. We're going to get to IQ in a second. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But my thing is, he's 6'3", IQ, that is. He's really good at getting to the basket, drawing the foul. Okay, he's a phenomenal free throw shooter. And he's also not a great facilitator at Sexton. So... If we're going to go this route and pay him, why not stay with IQ would be cheaper? It would allow us to go out and maybe trade for another player. We would keep the assets that we would burn on um, Sexton to maybe get a guy like TJ Warren, right? Or maybe sign a guy like Jared Allen in free agency. And he could really, like, complete the team without having to give so much away to get Sexton. You know, I like him, but I just feel like there's a better, cheaper route to get a much, you know, Maybe maybe the same results. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Interesting. Chip, Chip, I'll let you start that one, man. Thanks, Fredo. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, maybe, I don't think Sexton gets you the same results. Thanks for taking my call, quickly. guys. Interesting. Chip, Chip, hang I'll on. Let you start uh, hang on. Thanks, Fredo. Appreciate it, bro. Let me disconnect yeah, I don't from think uh, the Discord. Go, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't I don't think Sexton gets you the same results as quickly. I think he, he's gonna be more of a scorer than he's gonna be way is. more dynamic. Way yeah, more dynamic. yeah. I think he right now he, that is. like like quickly drives to the rim, yeah, for sure. But he doesn't attack like Sexton does and draw fouls like Sexton does. Like he's obviously a great free throw shooter, but he doesn't go to the line as much as Sexton does. So I think he, he's going to generate more offense that way in terms of going to the going to the foul line. And yeah, I I mean he's a better quickly he's a better shooter obviously than Sexton is right yeah. now. But I'm not sure he'll ever be like you said, CP, as dynamic as Sexton is. I don't think he will, but. I don't know if see uh, if quickly we'll ever have a twenty four point per game season. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I think you can still trade for Sexton and keep quickly. Yeah, why not have both? Yeah, why not have both? Yeah, you can play both of them at the same time. I do think that. So you can play quickly Sexton and RJ and Randall and Mitch. Like, I, I really think so. I, I really think you can have both. I, I don't see why you can't have one or the other. Let, let, let's save it for the for the IQ player review. But um, yeah, yeah, let's save it for the IQ player review. Shoot to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. He did mention TJ Warren. He's he's a guy I would like uh, as a potential trade target as well, man. Not not clear, um, Alex. What what uh, what the Pacers are going to do this off season with Carlisle in tow? They seem to have a nice little core uh, building with um, with Levert, and I don't know. We'll see if they keep Rogden. He's another guy I want to keep my eyes out on. Obviously, mm -hmm. it seems like uh, they're going to split up um, Sabonis and Miles Turner. Miles Turner, another guy I, I, I wouldn't mind on this team. So, Pace, Pace is definitely a team we could uh, we could watch for in terms of the trade market for sure. Absolutely, and if it was. Uh... I would take Brogdon if Brogdon's available. I, I like Brogdon's game. I think he's, especially from the cerebral aspect, that's what I really like about Brogdon. I think he's the type of guy that you can bring in here yeah. if you wanted to slow the pace, 
tearing it up. He can do all those things and just he, he's an efficient player. He's not going to be reckless. He can command an offense and just an easy, steady guy that you can rely on every single night. So I would be happy if we got Brogdon on this team. That'd be a major upgrade from what we've had. Absolutely, man. Let me um, let me dial into the switchboard real quick. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. If you guys are new in the chat, leave us a hashtag new and we will uh, we will shout you guys out. Let me just jump in here. Continue. All right. I would say the thing about quickly. Hang, well, hang on one second. Now, one second. I'm just going to turn your uh, volume down real quick. Your show now. All right. One. Let me uh, hit this up. Good to go. Watching you now. All right. Go ahead. What's your point now? No, the one thing I would say about your show will go live in five seconds. Four. Sure. Three, well, well, hang on, hang on. Two, one. <laughs> yeah, just uh, our British assistant here. She's talking over you, Al. Just want to make sure you got the mic. <laughs> just want to make sure you have the floor. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, the one thing, the one thing I would say is that the difference between quickly and Sexton is sure you met you guys mentioned being dynamic, but if Tibbs really wants his point guard to attack the basket, we we didn't see that from quickly. Sure, he no. was able to draw the fouls, but he didn't really have a layup package. He wasn't finishing around the rim that well. He was able to just drive and draw fouls, and then as we saw the season go on wasn't really doing it as much so because players were just being more aware that he's not really trying to go finish. So until he can develop that type of game, Colin Sexton has a a, a deeper bag than what quickly has right now. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you there. Um, Let's get to the phones. We're going to go to uh, phone number 917. 917, you live and direct, man. What's going on? Yo, CP, what up? It's JJ from Brooklyn. JJ, doing, bro? JJ what's How's going on, man? Thing? Dave, you can go, go ahead and, uh, and dial into Chilla, the switchboard. Man. JJ, what's good, bro? Chill, man. Uh, a few points. First, on, on the Lillard trade talk, mm-hmm. my thing is, I don't think it makes sense for us right now. You're going to have to give up RJ. Everyone's saying, oh, let's get him for pick swaps and knocks and quick. No, you're going to have to give up RJ. And then what? Then it's like, okay, you're going to have Randall and Lillard. That's not enough. You know, that's not going to win you anything. And then, you know, if like Kawhi was coming, now he's hurt. He's probably out all next year. So I just don't think that the timing is right. We're going to have no future. We're going to have no picks. We're going to have, you know, we're going to have no more young players. I just don't think it makes sense right now if they do trade him. And then on uh, free agency, I just, I know Nick fans hate hearing this, but I think we got to continue to be patient. This isn't a class to spend long-term cap space. It just isn't. We're going to be stuck in the middle. If we sign, are there guys I like? Yeah, I like Lonzo. I like Powell. I like Gary Trent. But those guys, they're not, they probably won't even help us get a Ford seat again next year. I just don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just, you know, sign guys to one-year deals and just continue to be patient until there's next year's period in the class is going to be really good. I just don't think this is a class to spend big time long-term cap space. And then on the Sexton thing, real quick, last mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. the assists, it's a little, it's not really telling because they ran a lot of two-point guard lineups when him and Garland were both healthy. Mm-hmm. And when Garland was out, Sexton ran point guard for most of the six, game, and six he times. averaged about six, six and a half Garland assists. Yeah. So I think, I don't think he's as bad a point guard as some would believe. And he's on the Cavs, so there's not much shooting. So, you know, I'm not saying he's the most pure point guard, because he's definitely he definitely isn't, but I don't think he's as bad a pure point guard as many believe. And just I just love the efficiency I really do for, for his size to be in the high forties from the field and high thirties from three. That's really impressive. So yeah, thanks for taking the call, CP. Appreciate yeah, it, man. Appreciate it, man. Definitely appreciate the call, bro. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lackluster class, appreciate man. It. De- definitely a lack lots of class now shout out to Ian Begley he he came out uh later last week and said that basically you know the Knicks are gonna be looking to preserve some cap space this off season with an eye towards 2022 um sounds like a broken record Knicks Knicks saving cap space we always saving it for the next season <laughs> but but it makes sense you know this season because with Kawhi with the partial torn ACL I don't I didn't think he was coming here anyway but you know he's out the picture and then, you know, you have a lot of older guys. I don't think CP3 is a realistic option. 
I think Conley and Lowry is something that that I would look for if I if I were the Knicks if they don't if they don't make a trade for for Sexton. And yeah, I don't, you know Powell Powell's somebody that that intrigues me for sure. I don't know if they're gonna try to sign and trade for Lonzo. I, I think that's less likely to happen, but we'll, we'll see what happens, man. Al, what do you what do you think about this free agent core so far? It's not a lot out there that's uh, <laughs> that's desirable. You know, I just I dropped the one about the point guards. I got one of the shooting guards on the way. And when I was when I've been going down through the list for free agency, you know, I'll tell you this: small forwards is bone dry, like. Yeah bone dry so don't don't look for any like hot pressing names when that one comes out but you know someone like Lonzo Ball that's that's intriguing because of how you can push the pace and transition uh, as I mentioned in my article that was the number one guy who I think the Knicks should go after because we didn't we couldn't push the ball and pit we couldn't push the ball in transition we need a guy who's more of a facil- facilitator we didn't really get that from uh Peyton and we can't just put it all on Randall and yeah. we're, I, we're, we're hoping that RJ can get there, but it's not there yet. Uh, so we need someone who can do that. And even if you get someone like Lonzo, I still believe that if you can get him on a good deal, right. And my, and I keep saying the max that would be like four years, 80. So 20 each year, you know, that could still be a contract that you could flip because he's a young player. He's only 23 years old. There's still some more to add to his game. You know, he's improved as a catch and shooter catch and shoot player in this league shooting close to 40% uh, from three. He still has to work on his mid range. Obviously the thing that everyone talks about is that he doesn't drive that much to the basket. Yeah, sure. That's fine. He did that as a rookie. I think that's more of like a product of the teams that he's with when you had LeBron James on the Lakers, his second season in the league. And then you talk about going down to New Orleans where you're trying to run it through Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. So I think they're trying to run it through more. So those guys, especially this season, since we had, since we saw Zion have the ball, more in his hands, more so than Lonzo Ball. So that's a player that I look out for. You know, another point guard, as you mentioned, Connolly, Lowry. Those are guys that if you want to bring in a vet to just kind of groom the next point guard or just be that solid veteran presence while being able to distribute and be that lead guard, those guys are really good options as well. You know, campaign is me for is someone for I would just take a flyer on, see what he can do. Mm. Obviously. Not so much right now in the playoffs, especially with uh, after as we're seeing in the finals. But still, someone I would take a take a flyer on for a cheap and just see what can happen. And then shooting guards, like I think Powell is definitely a realistic option because he's an unrestricted free agent that we can go for. Someone like Gary Trent Jr. The Raptors traded for him. Yeah, he's a restricted free agent. They're going to try to keep him because that was the whole point. They essentially just swap the player so that the way they can have a younger player who they know they can match any yeah, offer. Yeah, Ujiri's going to so take I, care of him. He's not letting him walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the free agent market overall, there's not, there's not a lot going on. I don't know who 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 are you who do you think is on the market that that's intriguing to you? I mean, for me, I think Powell for sure. Mm-hmm. Powell for sure, and then you know that that's really it. What, what I think is important though is that. We need so you know neither neither Lowry nor Conley excites me based on their age, the price, and their durability issues, especially Conley. But what I feel I feel like it, it's important if we're gonna go into the draft and pick out one or two players, we're gonna continue with RJ. We're gonna continue with Mitch. If Obi's still here, if IQ's still here, I think it's still important to emphasize player development. And, and that is by having guys like those two guys that can make these plays better, you know, or or, or quality vets. But I, I put those two guys at the top because we need a point guard. You know, continuing that trend, like like the impact that Rose had, um, to a lesser extent, the impact that that Burks had. He was just a score off the bench, but but Rose really, you know, got these guys better. We need to continue that because number one, this team made the four seed in the East. They're going to be under pressure to continue that pace or, or try to, you know, be around that ballpark. But also, if we're talking about trades and, and everybody's under this this belief that we can't trade RJ for anybody, well, other guys are going to have to step up and be better. And, and you're not going to do that if you don't have the quality veterans that's going to help you win. Chip, what's, what's your take on that? On free agency? Yeah. On free agency, I, I, I really want Kyle Lowry. I really do. Mm. I think I know people are are down on him because he's he's 35. I, I I've seen stuff like two years, 50 million, 
two years, sixty million. Yeah, I'm saying I saw some up up in the thirties, man. Yeah. I I would I would do that. Mm. I would do that just to get Kyle Lowry in the building. I would. I know it's not a contract everybody would do. I think Kyle Lowry is that good. I think he'd be that big for the franchise just to get him in there and play well and win and help us win. I think with with Kyle Lowry on the team, it's just such an improvement. I really do think that, and I think he'd be that important for us. I love Lowry. Uh, I I like Norm Powell a lot too. Yeah, I'm not I, sure I like if Powell he's a lot, bro. Yeah, I think everybody likes Norm Powell. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how realistic it is to get him for a great price. I think he's going to go for huge money, too much. Uh, I after at listening to Alex talk about Lonzo as much as Alex has talked about Lonzo, I'm kind of warming up to Lonzo a little bit, but the price he's going to cost, I, I feel like Lonzo is going to cost a lot of money. I don't think money. they're going to double pay for him. I don't well, see. Oh, the Pelicans it. are not going to pay for him. I will see. Well, according to, to the, to Shams and the athletic the Pelicans are going to let him walk for, for if it's a, you know, exorbitant price, which I, which you could see that, but I don't think, that I don't think the Knicks would would trade assets for him and then pay him. I don't think they're going to do that for for a no. player like Lonzo. No, I think it's going to be a desperate team that pays yeah. him. It's going to be like the Bulls who are desperate. The Knicks aren't desperate. They don't need Lonzo. The Bulls are desperate. Yeah, I think it's going to be someone like the Bulls or maybe Dallas, who's desperate too. I I think it'll be someone like that. Yeah. who pays him. So I yeah I I'm not out out on Lonzo like some people are. I. I just I wouldn't pay him yeah. huge money. No, I think he could help. I think there's several yeah. areas where Lonzo can help this team. I've said it on every show we talk about Lonzo. I think he could help. I just don't think that they'll they'll pay the price. No. Nah. I, I just nah, don't I've... think that they'll pay the price. Mm-mm. No, and if it's more than like I keep saying, if it's more than eighty, it's not he's not worth it. And I think Chip's right. The Bulls also Shams report that the Clippers were also interested in Lonzo Ball yeah. as well. So let those guys be the guys that decide to overpay for Lonzo. He He's not, he's not worth that until he can start being consistent in other areas of his game. Yeah. Um, but I think he'd be a good addition just to help. And I saw someone in the chat saying, if I was saying Lonzo over Sexton, I would take Sexton over Lonzo. Yeah, because of the, because of the scoring and just I think he can do a little bit more than what he. Well, I know he can do more than what Lonzo does, but if we're talking about through a free agency standpoint, Lonzo's at the top of that point guard list. How do you guys feel about uh, Demar Derozan though as a free agent? No, no, I'm out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same as way. I'm not big on Derozan. You can hard pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, you'd have to. He'd have to have the ball in his hands a lot to be as exactly. effective as he needs to be, like all the time. And I don't want that. So yeah, and that takes away from Randall's effectiveness. So I, I wouldn't go after Derozan. Uh, I definitely would not. Um, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your squad. CP, Alex, Rataros, Chip Murphy in the building. We got the Knicks Fan TV All-Star panel tonight. What do you guys think, man? Sexton, leave us your Sexton comments. What do you guys think about free agency? Call us up, 657-383-1509. Remember, tonight's show, as usual, all Knicks Fan TV live shows are presented by Manscaped. Fellas, it is summertime. It's hot out here, especially in New York, man. It's been hot out here. Make sure you turn on the AC downstairs, and that is with the lawnmower. 4.0, 4.0, the number one men's grooming tool below the waist. This new lawnmower 4.0 fells with the matte black design. It's literally literally the Ferrari of ball trimmers. You got the LED light. It's a spotlight now, so you can do it in the dark, whatever you guys are into. Waterproof. Gets You get, you get nice extended battery life. You can um, plug it in on the charger. You could, pl- you could also charge it wirelessly as well. So it definitely gives you some versatility there. And for tonight's show, as usual, you guys are going to get 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com. Enter promo code NYX at checkout. That's manscaped.com. Enter promo code NYX at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, so let's go to the phones. Let's hear what the people got to say. Phone line, the, the phone lines are lighting up. We got over 1,000 people in the chat right now. Let's get those likes up. We got to get to 1,000 likes before this show's over. So everybody hit that thumbs up button for us because uh, the chat is getting heavy right now. We got a lot of Knicks fans that want to get their reactions in. Uh, shout out to Will Note sends a super chat. He says, no geriatric point guards. I think he was going at you a little bit, Chip. You, 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 uh, you wanted Lowry there. He says, no geriatric point guards. 
we'll notice all the way out. My goodness. Geriatric, he's 35, he's <laughs> not 40. Jeez. <laughs> no geriatric point guards. All right, let's get to the folds, hear what the people want to say. Let's go to Joe from Ohio. I think he has uh, a lot to say about the Sexton stuff. Joe, what's going on? Yeah, what's good, CP? How you doing, uh, bro? What's good? What's good? I listen to boys. I ain't chopping up with you in a minute, man. Just yeah, long time. Show you some love, first and foremost, all west. Um, but hey, bro, I gotta get to it, dog. Mm-hmm. Gotta get to it. And I know you're gonna hate me, bro. Yep. I don't want you to hate me too long because I want to call right. in on a regular basis, <laughs> dog. I'm completely out, like your boy said, with the geriatric point guards, dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm done with the Lowrys. <laughs> I'm cool on the Conleys because I feel like what they could give you. Right in regards to being a good veteran, all that stuff, you can sign. Um, I do maybe like a Jeff T. Oh, oh man, he he he's speechless, Joe. You still there? Wait, did he say no geriatric point guards and, and then, then he said Jeff T? Jeff T? <laughs> and he said is due for a rookie extension after this season, and I'm not comfortable paying him over a hundred million, which he's gonna want. Mm-hmm. And sidebar, he's putting up 24 points on the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, RJ could average 30 on that team. But anyhow, <laughs> Bradley Beal and Levine are gonna be free agents next summer, so I believe by signing Lonzo to like a Julius Randle type of contract, will we give him? Three years, sixty million team option will be more cap friendly and flexible for us. And remember, RJ, if he goes crazy this year, hopefully he can get a rookie bag, a rookie max. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't, I don't trust paying Colin Sexton. He's not. It's just, it's he's too ball dominant. He can't play off the ball. RJ's learning to play off the ball. We know Randall loves the ball. It's just. It's not healthy. <laughs> it's not going to look good aesthetically. I just think we should just go with Lonzo, three years, sixty-six million team option. Hopefully, we could convince Deal or Levine so to you, come so next you'd summer. So you'd rather trade? You'd rather trade for Lonzo and then pay him? Um, actually, to get Lonzo, I believe I, I don't want to say this because I know he's your boy. But listen, Mitchell Robinson, you're on my radar. Oh right? my god! Get it together. Bro. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Val, thanks for the call. Get it thanks together. Thanks for the call, Val. <laughs> thanks for the call, Val. He's out of there. Woo! He's out of there, man. This this is the family my show, goodness. Alex. As you know, this is the family <laughs> show. Woo! <laughs> but but Block Ness Monster slander was on call for on tonight's show. That was not on the menu. So we got to get him out of here. My goodness! Wow. By the. By the way, if we're talking about guys who are on bad teams that just put up a lot of points, what is Zach Levine? Like, isn't doesn't he fall into that bucket? Yeah. Like just saying. So I I think it's I think we put too much emphasis on guys who are on bad teams because they're in bad situations with either bad coaching or just a bad organization in general. Um, we should know because for a while we had the New York Knicks were a bad organization for a while, so we should know about that. But I don't see just saying that Colin Sexton's on a bad team, putting up some same amount of points that RJ could do it. I mean, rookie season, he didn't, and not there's not no slander to RJ. I'm just saying it's not that easy to put up 24 points on a bad team. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. And then I mean, he, he was he was sharing the backcourt with Sexton, right? Wasn't Sexton running the point mode for the most part in, in Cleveland? Yep. Yeah, Garland. Yeah. All right. So. Val, you're my guy, man. You know, I like when you call, man. But the, I, it, it, that was three strikes, Val. You know what I mean? That was three <laughs> strikes, man. And then you capped it off and said you, you, you're putting Mitch on the block to bring Lonzo here. Come on, my Val. goodness. Come on. Yeah. Man. I mean, I wouldn't give Sexton 100 plus million either right off. But, I, I mean, you also can't get Lonzo for $66 million, I yeah. don't think. Yeah. I, I don't think so. No. No. Uh, I no don't chance. think so, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. All right, back to the phones we go. Let's go to uh, DJ from Shaolin. DJ, what's going on? What's up? What's up, y'all? Run it up, run it up. CP, yes, man, you you got too what's much info. On? Alex, what up, man? How you been? But CP, you got too much info, man. The feds is trying to do a sweep. I, I know, Every man. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Listen, just... I think... Yeah, I, ahead, I think I think when you was I, I think whenever you're not home, I think Mr. Dolan put, bugged your, your 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 computer, bro. I, it's I not a good look no more, bro. I wouldn't be surprised. You bro. know you know too much info. You yeah. you on the you on the lines with Jonathan, you with Bagley, you, you too you too you too well yeah. in, bro. You, you already but know, bro. On this, yeah, man. But um, yeah, I just came back from the gym, and you know I saw y'all. I I got the notification. Listen, mm-hmm. 
I this is how I felt because I I had to wait a week for me to have my true feelings because I'm invested in Obi. If, if y'all know me, mm-hmm. I'm who they. I'm exact. That's the, exactly who I wanted in the draft. Now, with that being said, if I got to give up a backup, which Obi is, let's all keep it real, because not even God knew that Randall was going to be this good. Yeah. And clearly, we got to pay Randall. We're not starting over. So this whole trade Randall thing, that's over and done with. We run it with Randall. We build in with RJ and Randall. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, if, if all it takes is that proposed trade from last week is accurate, if all it takes is old, a backup role player, a bench warmer, and a pick that won't even equal to Colin Sexton, then I'm I'm with that. And this is why, and this is before y'all all black on me, because I've been the Lonzo bandwagon supporters. But you could trade for Sexton this year, and we could do the same thing Brooklyn did when they wanted to get KD. They didn't have enough money to get KD and Kyrie. They signed and trade. And just since because Devo wasn't a part of the Brooklyn organization, remember, he got traded for Kuzma. They shipped him off and said, don't worry about it. That's not our problem. As long as we got a star, that's not a problem. So why can't we, once, you know, Dame Dame officially, officially says halfway through the season, I want out. In December, when we, why can't we do that with a sign and trade? I'd much rather give up Sexton in a trade to get Dame than RJ because there's no way they could demand both. They yeah. can't demand both and pick. That's outrageous. And even with Sexton here, my man, listen, CP, you know me. I've been on the Will Barton bandwagon all summer. He just opted out, like, what, yesterday? Mm. So, clearly, he's testing his waters. I would love to get him off the bench. So, you could still get Sexton and not have to pay him right now. That Lonzo, the last call of Val, I, I support him, but he's you're not getting Lonzo for 66. Yeah, you, and I don't even know why the shot at Mitch. If you're going to get Lonzo, why are you taking a shot at Mitch? Because Lonzo unlocks Mitch. So. Right. I don't understand that. But you you got to pay 80 or up for Lonzo. That's the only way he's getting out of there. So why not just trade for something less to get Sexton? And then you surround Sexton with players that could play off him, like the Will Barton. I'm not a big fan of Kelly Oubre, but I'm not I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie. If Kelly Oubre is the fourth, fifth option, oh, no. and that's starting five, then oh, I'm no. good with that. No, I'm sir. I'm good with that. No, sir. Sorry. But – Oh no! 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 Nah, no! I'm, I'm out on it. I'm out on it. You, you, you were going. I, I, you were coasting. You were coasting, Deej, until, until you hit the Ubre thing, man. It's all right. It's it's all good, bro. Listen, I'm not a fa- listen, CP. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Ubre at all. It's Will Barton over Ubre for me. But I understand. But no, I'm just saying. I just want everybody that that's understanding and listening to your show. Like, if, since we trade, if we do trade for Sexton mm-hmm. next week, that's not the end game, y'all. Like, yes, we have to pay him, but he's movable. He's still yeah. young. And like V said, he's not just no natural-born scorer, bro. He played with some really bad teammates, some really bad coaching in Cleveland. So if y'all ever get the chance, because now they're playing the whole seasons over and over again now on TV, mm-hmm. watch those games. Like, a lot of those teammates that didn't like him having the ball, calling him a ball hog, they wasn't any good. So if, if Tim can make diamonds out of Randall and make RJ hey. go from year one RJ to year two, Maybe he I'm, I'm signing up doubt. Maybe he deserves a benefit I'm out, of the I'm doubt, out. bro. My fault for this whole I'm, I'm out, CP. I, I'm wasting enough of your time. No, you're good, bro. To, to you're, good. About that. you're good, man. Appreciate the call, man. Yeah, may, maybe Tibbs does deserve the benefit, the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, man. Right now, he talk, he, now he's talking Sexton. He's talking Uber. He, he's, he's trying to open the floodgates, <laughs> man. One, one project at a time. One project at a time, man. You know? We're not trying to just open up the whole thing. We, we, we're just starting to get into into some good graces now with, with the fan base. One, one at a time. So, hey, you don't want a guy who's just here for the vibes? I mean, that's Kelly Oubre. Nah, on, nah. Uh, stay, on the stay, stay on the West Coast. <laughs> Oubre's a big man. project. Yeah, stay on the West Coast for that, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Salute to uh, King Deej for calling in. Who works at the Apple Store, man? I need a discount. <laughs> the Super Chats are good. Somebody who works at the Apple Store, hit me up ASAP. I, I got a Mayday situation going on. The system is overloaded. I don't know how much longer we're going to last on tonight's show, but, but we, we're hanging in there tough. CP in here, Alex Rotaro, Chip Murphy in here, KnicksFanTV.com crew. Definitely a, a good show so far. Spirited Debates. Fan base is in here getting their opinions. Salute to Lloyd Barker Rock Jr. Sends a super chat. He says, I blame Max Kellerman on hacking your network, CP. He's trying to slow down your greatness. D- King Deed said it might have been Dolan. It could be, man. All conspiracy theories are welcome on tonight's show. It could be. It could be true, man. 
I, I don't know. But um, yeah, definitely got to uh, address those issues and, and we'll do so. But thanks for hanging with us and, and staying patient, man. We had a thousand people rocking with us earlier, back down to about 800. So the people are coming back. Definitely appreciate that. And uh, a couple more other super chats I want to acknowledge before we take some more calls. Shout out to Will Notes once again. Uh, NY Sports Guy sends a super chat. He says that the same people that say Lowry and Conley are too old are the same people that said no to CP3 two years ago are in all of them right now. Hmm. Mm. All right. All right. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Shout out. God. Shout out to uh, Tingus Pingus. Nice name. He says the uh, the disc link. Oh, the Discord link doesn't work. TM, check out the Discord link because uh, they're saying that the Discord link isn't working. So let's get that fixed. He says, why not draft uh, Trey Man, um, Trey Man, T- uh, T- Trey Murphy the third, and package picks thirty two and fifty eight for young talent, veteran help, or picks down the line. Well, I don't think 58 is going to get you anything, but, you know, maybe maybe 32 because 32 is uh, right there at the beginning of the second round. It's, it's the second pick of the of the uh, second round. So, you know, maybe some teams will see some value there. Never know. We'll see, man. Next, next going is that draft of four picks, and, and we'll see uh, what they come out with. Um, Chip, real quick, be, before we get into the quickly thing, who who are some, uh, some guys that, that you like in this year's draft? Reeve Cooper, I really like. Mm. Uh, Kispert, I really like yeah, too. I like yeah, I like Kispert a lot. Uh, and Duarte, I think it'd be, I think it'd be really good if they took Duarte or Cooper. Cooper's just, Cooper's my guy. Mm. He's just the most fun to watch and he's just the most interesting prospect. And I mean, I haven't looked, uh, too much into all the other guys, but of the guys that I've looked at, like Duarte, Cooper, Kispert, guys like that, like just, and you read about Cooper and, it feels like he'd be a great fit here. Like everything about him, I I know there's like his shot. There's there's a problem with there, so he yeah. couldn't like slide in and I guess be a huge contributor right away. But he's he just looks like a guy who you feel like could be a success on a Tibbs team in New York, and it uh, feels like a fit. Al, how about you, man? Any prospects that uh, catch your eye so far? Trey Murphy is definitely up there. I yeah. like Trey Mann as well. Sharif Cooper, Usman Garaba, who I just watched on Spain last night. Yeah. For Spain who, last who's, night, who's he was represented, good. full disclosure, by Leon Rose's sons mm-hmm. <laughs> playing for Spain. It's in the cards. It's in the cards. <laughs> it's in the cards, man. But Trey Murphy is definitely uh, my guy. I think a good 3 and D player, plays gritty on defense. Someone who can probably develop into like a Cam Johnson type of role, a little stretch force type of player. I, I like him. I'm from Virginia. So that's someone I'd hope like the Knicks could get around like the 1921 area. Yeah. I like I like his game a lot. I like Trey Murphy a lot too, man. I, I definitely like Trey Murphy. I think I said Trey Man earlier. Terrence, Terrence Man, right? It's Terrence Man, right? Trey I get man. I get it. It's Trey Man. I get Trey I man. get him and, and uh the guy from the Clippers. I, I yeah. confuse those yeah. names every time, every show I say those two <laughs> names. The kid from Florida, <laughs> Trey Man. Yeah, I like his game a lot. Um Cooper's definitely intriguing. You know, the the, the shooting issues and you know the defense at, at that height is a bit of a concern. But at nineteen, if he's there and you can get a playmaking dynamo like that, you know, with the playmaking potential that he has, I, I think the Knicks should take it. I, I don't see why not. Because at 21, you can always go get uh, whoever's left over of the wing shooters. And there's a lot. You know, this is definitely a wing-heavy draft as well. So I, I think they'll be in good shape. If they can move up, I'd love to see them get Kispert. I'd love to see them pull, pull a Moody out of, uh, out of the bag. You know, Worldwide mm-hmm. West is in the back room uh, making phone calls and, and somehow – can 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 uh, parlay some of those those uh, those picks into Moody? I think that would be incredible. But um, they got a lot of options, man. They got a lot of options. Hopefully, I don't think they'll I don't think they'll come out of it with four picks. I think maybe two. But um, yeah, I think yeah yeah two. I think two. I think two max. Just because the way we saw last season, we see Tibbs doesn't play a lot of rookies. You know, I mean, we saw quickly in Obi play, but. They even didn't even get that many minutes, and I think Tibbs wants to go more veteran presence and have his young guys just wearing right. the robes before he starts implementing them. So I don't see four guys getting a bench spot. Um, question for you, though, on both both of you, what do you guys think about uh, uh, James Booknight? Do you think that's in the cards for the next? I game? was just gonna ask you guys about him. I love him. 
Yeah. I think he's great. I, I would I love, love if they trade it up. I think it would be great if they took him. Yeah, I would love to see him get him. But a lot of the mocks, yeah. I, I see a lot of them, you know, t- sending him to Golden State with either seven. Um, you've seen a, a lot of high lottery picks for Book Knight, but he's mm-hmm. another guy I'd love to see, man. You know, another scoring threat I'd love to see on this team, no doubt about it. A local kid as well. You yeah. know, grew up in the area, went to UConn. So Book Knight is also a guy that uh, that I got my eyes on, man. What do you guys think in the chat? Who are some of your – give me your top three draft prospects that you wouldn't mind seeing in the orange and blue uniform next year uh we're coming up on the draft 10 days away from the draft alex and chip will be joining me for the live stream we'll be live for the whole uh nba draft we got prizes and giveaways going on as well so you you know the vibes already man we'll have a great lineup of guests coming through uh ck2k will be here my guy jd jd sports talk is has signed up to be on the panel and uh my guy chris lebron off ball network so We'll have uh, the six of us on the panel just just rapping about the draft, man. So make sure you guys are keeping it locked to uh, Knicks Fan TV on YouTube. And uh, let's let's get to this quickly. So since since we are on the draft uh, last year with the twenty fifth pick, the Knicks were able to uh, to draft Emmanuel quickly, man, out of Kentucky. The the uh, the Kentucky stable got got larger with with Emmanuel quickly in tow. We all remember the the D plus rating that CBS Sports Network gave him. <laughs> And then turn that into a meme all year after we roasted him. But nevertheless, man, you know, after a surprising season by all Knicks, you know, quickly was certainly part of that spark. A spark off the bench. 11.4 points per game, 39% shooting from three. Um, I'll, I'll start with you, man. How, how did you look at uh, quickly season? How did you how did you reflect on quickly season? I think it was a success for a rookie, you know, for coming in. Just hearing the hype that he's going to be a shooter, we saw, you know, he shot over 40% in college. He shot over 90% from the three throw line mm-hmm. in college. There wasn't really a lot of high expectations. He was taken late in the draft, right? But seeing that he was able to come in, be a spark off the bench for most of the season, just really, it was, I guess, the Knicks have never been good at drafting uh, a late round pick. And to see Emmanuel quickly just be a good late round pick and be a steal of the draft. And then for a portion of the season, be in consideration for rookie of the year. Very successful. I think that, you know, the things that you love seeing from him, obviously, is just being that spark at some point. Like, once he gets going, shooting from three, be able to shoot eight for ten from behind the arc. That's that's what you love. He helped us win some games very quick, able to draw fouls, pulling some. Uh, I love the game seeing where he was able to pull, uh, what was it, the, the Trey Young bag on him, just drawing fouls, and Trey Young just complaining. But overall, I think it was a very successful season. You know, there's obviously games, there's obviously areas of his game that he needs to improve, being able to drive to the basket, playmaking, taking some mid-range jumpers. You know, he didn't show any of that. That's where he's going to have to expand. But as a rookie, it's very hard to see a lot of guys just come in, dominate, and be like your John Morant, you know, or be like a LaMelo Ball and just really just own that moment, be a starter, and just doing all those type of fantastic things. So for what he was able to do and just be – as a rookie instrumental for being a four seed team and helping this Knicks team, you know, come back from just being (laughs) in the bottom of the barrel, very successful for what he could do, but definitely areas I want to see him work on is playmaking, shooting some, uh, getting his mid range game going, just being that three level threat, uh, because that's really going to take him to the next level. In my opinion. Yeah, Chip, how about you? How'd you evaluate quickly season? Yeah. I mean, if you were given it a letter grade, I would say a plus. I think he exceeded, like Alex said, all expectations of a pick at his at, at late in the draft. I, I was just, I think everybody so impressed with him that, and obviously the stats speak for themselves, 11 points on 40%, nearly 40% from three point. And he was just fearless. Like the, he loved the big moment for a rookie. You never see that kind of thing. And it's it was just impressive to watch he's and and i think he's only going to get better obviously and he's perfect obviously to play in new york perfect to play at the garden and one thing i do hope that happens alex mentioned his uh playmaking i also hope we get to see more of him and julius and rj on the court next year because i don't think we'll see him as the starter next year but when him and Julie, him and Julius and RJ played 688 possessions last year, they were plus 15 and a half points per 100 possessions mm. when those three were on the court. 
It's the 98th percentile of efficiency. That's an insane scoring margin when those three guys are on the court together. Basically, when those three guys played together, the Knicks were really good. So I, you just need to see more of those three guys together. And I don't know if quickly he's going to start. I don't think he will. But I think without Peyton there, who it doesn't matter who they bring in as point guard, I think we'll see more of quickly with those two guys. And that's the biggest thing next year for him to play more minutes with better players yeah. like Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. And when he does, I think we'll see that two point percentage go up. Cause I think we'll have more room to drive. And I, yeah, I was just really impressed with everything he did last year. Uh, I think he even came along more defensively towards the end of the year. Clearly he's easily, he's very well coachable. He really wants to learn and it's just a really smart player D- doesn't play like a rookie. And I, yeah, I, very high hopes for him in the future, I think. And I think a lot of people say this on Twitter. You can't box him in yet. We don't really know what his role yeah. is yet. So we don't know who what he is. Is he a point guard? Is he a scorer off the bench, like Lou Williams type? We don't know. Yeah, I'm with you, man. We really don't know what his ceiling is just yet. But I, I thought he had an outstanding rookie campaign for a guy that we really didn't know what we were going to get from. You know, this is the 25th pick in the draft. You know, a lot of these guys don't play in their first year. A lot of these guys don't don't may, might not even crack the league. I mean, quickly came in from the preseason on and just established himself as a piece that he forced Tibbs' hand. You got to play this kid. We needed it. We we knew the shooting was elite. Coming out of coming out of uh, Kentucky, we we knew that, and and we knew that this team was in in desperate need of of that shooting ability. But the the way that he got his shots off, um, in in a veteran like way, I just thought you know it was a was a big lift for this team in so many games, man. I remember that uh, even though they lost, my favorite quickly game was the Portland game. The game where he dropped 31 points, he's battling Dame, he's battling uh, Anthony Simons. Knicks are down by like 25 going into the fourth. They're able to cut it down to about like three or so. Quickly has 21 points in the fourth quarter. He was absolutely electric. And, um, you know, that was the scoring versatility that you saw from him. His ability to draw fouls. Uh, like a veteran, you know, kind of like how Trey Young, how Harden were able to to draw those. I, I thought that was what really impressed me as well. He finished um, in the league um, non-shooting foul draw rate. I think he was in like the 90th percentile, you know, 2.2% uh, percent of his shots. And then uh, shooting foul rate, he was 8.7% uh, of his shots he was able to draw a foul on. And then, you know, I kind of thought later on in the season, he wasn't getting much of that respect from the referees. And then I also felt like teams were kind of adjusting to to that and, and kind of, um, you know, forcing them into some some bad shots and, and some turnovers there. So, you know, teams made some adjustments. We'll, we'll see how he does in his second year. But overall, I, I thought quickly was, was definitely outstanding. Um, when Rose came, I thought having him off ball was, was also something that gave us a spark so that, you know, it, he – the fact that he didn't have to worry so much about facilitating for others and he can just come in and just score off of Rose's creation. I thought that definitely gave us a lift when Rose got there. And then when they had, you know, at times when they ran the three guard lineup with Rose Qu- quickly and Burks, I thought that lineup was, was definitely dynamic, especially in the second half of the season. And, and that really fortified our bench. I'm with you though, Chip, you know, seeing him out there with, with RJ and Julius will, will definitely be a plus next year. And we'll see where they go. Uh, but one of the things for, for improvement is definitely the, the intermediate game. We, we know the free throw shooting is elite. The three-point shooting is elite. But he only shot 40% from two. Yeah. And he didn't finish too well at the rim. Didn't drive enough at the rim. And, you know, it's either three-point or a floater for quickly. So you want to see him develop some sort of, you know, intermediate shot so that he's not so predictable on, on his drives. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if he can get that. If he can get that off, then I, th- I think the sky is the limit for him. And then also uh, playmaking. I definitely want to see him become a bit better for playmaker. That was all. That was always going to be his swing skill. Uh, how well he was going to be able to set his guys up and, and play make for others. Uh, we, we saw he kind of missed some reads out there over the course of the season and was a bit tunnel vision. So we'll see. We'll see if if he's able to to you know improve in those areas. Uh, I think he could be a starter. I think he could definitely be a starter. But for now, just having his three-point abilities on this team 
is is going to do us very well, whether it's off the bench or closing. He, he can still close games, as we saw this year. So I think Quickly's been a great asset for us, man. We're a really good absolutely. asset. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I like a fun fact, by the way, and this is going to an NBA advanced stats. They logged 208 jumpers that he took this season, and 193 of those jumpers were three-pointers. So the remaining, which is 15, were mid-range. So he only took 15 wow. mid-range jumpers mm-hmm. this entire season. So he definitely that's, needs to work on that, that game. Yeah. So, this, so to the guy that was trying to compare him to Sexton, now yeah. he's, he's, he's not Sexton, not saying that he can't be, but, you know, Sexton's offensive arsenal has, has pretty much been defined. I mean, 24 points per game. It, you, you see it, and you can see it on the court. Quickly, he's got a ways to go there, but uh, nevertheless, he, he definitely showed, showed some promise, especially from the three-point strike. But only 15 mid-range shots total this year. That, yep. That's kind of crazy. That's definitely kind of crazy. And then, obviously, defensively, you know, we'll, we'll see how he comes around. They, there were some times where you saw teams trying to hunt him under mismatches and, and clearly trying to take advantage of, of his lack of size, his lack of strength. And uh, so we'll, we'll see how he how he improves there. Um, I was a bit disappointed in, in, in the Hawks series. Obviously, it was playoffs and things of that nature. And he certainly gave the team a spark in game one. You know, he was shooting damn near 40 footers. Definitely had the roof blown off of MSG, but overall struggled in, in the playoffs. So he's like like everybody else did in the series, but definitely wanted to see him take some more shots. And take a bit better shots, you know, give credit to the Hawks on, on their defense. But I also didn't think quickly um, shot the ball enough in, in that series to, to really help us get going. So we'll, we'll see what they learn from there and, and how he gets better. But Hawks series was definitely a bit of a letdown. Yeah, it definitely was. You know, I, I, I think I wish Tibbs would have used quickly a little bit more. I think he could have been a little spark just because we saw him be fearless in the regular season. I think he was a little too too tight in the rotations when we weren't that tight right uh this entire season and i think that just played that just played uh against us you know but i i I get the kind of logic he was going for let me go with my veterans because the young guys maybe aren't ready for the moment but i still think when you're seeing what's happening where hawks are coming back in game three game four you need to just it's you got to use everything that you have on the bench you got you got to throw everyone out there especially when you know quickly can just get going at any second i wish we could have seen him more because we saw that last game of the series he started mm-hmm. to go off mm-hmm. and it's just kind of what could have been if you played him a little bit more uh maybe you didn't need to play d rose as many minutes maybe you could have spaced the four out for julius to get more shots with rj if you put quickly out there for a little bit and just set uh d rose on the bench just a little bit longer i just wish we could have seen that yeah, I think by the time he decided to bench Peyton quickly was kind of already out of rhythm with his minutes. He just his shot was out of whack by then. Yeah, and then I also think just defensively, man, that the way the yeah. Hawks are shredding us with, with the pick and roll, I'm just not sure. I, I listen, nobody nobody had an answer for it, right? It, you know, Peyton definitely obviously didn't. D Rose obviously was getting flamed out there, and and I don't think quickly would have fared much better. But so maybe it didn't even matter at the end of the day. Yeah. But I, I from I'm just thinking from a tip standpoint, he's still gonna lean on on especially his veterans to to try to uh, to slow down that that high octane offense, man. So. We'll, we'll see how they, they bounce back next season. Uh, what do you guys think in the chat? On a scale of, let's say, 1 to 10, how would you rank, 1 being the worst, 10 being the, the best, how would you rank Emmanuel Quickly's rookie season? Leave a comment in the chat. And, and what do you guys think about his, his season overall? Leave us some comments, and, and we'll, we'll take a look. I want to shout out Mr. William1072. Sends a super chat, Mr. William1072. What's going on? He's, he says, uh, oh, he puts his name in the NBA draft. Uh, selections. He says Jared Butler and Trey Murphy spend money mm. for Norman Powell. And we just heard that uh, Jared Butler announced on Twitter on Friday that he's been cleared. So that was a question mark um, in terms of the the uh, NBA draft, his NBA draft prospects. He's been cleared. So we'll see, man. I, I would like him too, man. A nice little combo guard, defense, they shoot the ball. You know, came from a good school, championship team. Uh, and I think he'll be in the, on the Knicks' radar as well. They did interview him, as far as uh, I heard. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if Jared Butler becomes available now that he's been cleared by the NBA. Yeah, Jared Butler is another guy. To like, hopefully, it's another option the Knicks could probably go for. He also can give you a little bit of a playmaking, playmaking too. So that would be nice from him. You know, 
would like to see him on this team. There's, I, I feel like there, this draft, unlike last season, where there's a lot more uh, knows like what we can get, mm-hmm. and it's deeper as well. So I don't think we'll there'll be too much. Uh, there, there, there'll be a, a good amount left over once we get to nineteen twenty one. Yeah. For sure. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. All right, we'll take a couple calls before we wrap. You guys want to talk Sexton uh, quickly. Whatever you guys want to talk about, give us a call, 657-383-1509. And also on the Knicks Fan TV Discord, take a couple more calls before we wrap up. And let's go to let's go to my guy Angel from Philly. Angel, what's going on, bro? Yo, yo, what's good, CP? How you doing, bro? What's good, bro? How you feeling, man? I'm good. Hey, what's going on, Alex? Uh, and Chip, how you what's guys going? doing, man? What's up? What's going on, Angel? I'm good. Hey, listen, man, for the whole, uh, you know, sexy rumors, Um, I don't know about y'all, but I really don't want to pay twice. You know, I don't want to give up our top two draft choices or one of our draft choices and then give up on Obi so fast. And then, you know, when it comes time to pay him, you know, you either don't want to pay him or he's going to leave, you know, and that to me doesn't make sense, you know. So I would rather go like Jalen Brunson if you're going to make a trade, maybe Lonzo. Um, you know, that's where I would go because uh, whoever's going to be the point guard, anybody that's not Elfin Payton, I'm cool with. I don't care who with it. You could put me in there, you know. I just don't want to see Elfin <laughs> playing, playing the point guard anymore. So I'm, I'm just done with him, you know, but I just think what, you know, the whole OB thing, you know, let's just stay patient, man. Like, we got to build our talent, you know. And um, and as far as Coach Tibbs, man, you got to open up them lineups, man. Give them some minutes, you know. I, I really thought that OB really set this game up in the playoffs. So why give up on him right now, you know. And it just doesn't make sense to give up on him so fast, you know. And granted, we didn't see Randall playing this well. But, I mean, why not, you know, put him at the five, you know, because um, – as, as much as, you know, you, you want a defensive center in the game, I mean, I don't think Noel's coming back. And yeah, I don't, sure. you know, know about, um, you know, Mitchell. You know, I just don't see – I don't see him being a part of the future either, you know, and he gets hurt a lot, you know. So, I just don't want to give up on young talent so easy. I mean, we stuck with Frank Nilakina for three years. I mean, you can't stick with Obi for two. I mean, come on, give me a break, you know. So, and when it comes to – the draft. Um, I think my top three choices would be uh, Terrence Mann, um, Murphy, and Cooper. Any one of those those players right there, I'm cool with. But um, you know, and then even when it comes to the you know the trade for Black Dean, you know, like we're not in the position to make that kind of move right now. But how are you going to be in position if you don't build your own talent? Right. You know, and, 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 and that's what I'm saying, bro. I, I, mean, I just, appreciate the call, bro. But but that's why I'm saying you got to be able to develop your younger players. You know, and just just fielding a team with young guys, we've seen it. We see it with Cleveland right now. That's why everybody's calling Sexton a loser. They don't have quality veterans to help them win. They got they got Love and Drummond, the two biggest quitters in the league. They'll probably both end up on the Nets next year, along with Blake Griffin, another quitter. You know, they, they don't have quality vets. Look at the Sacramento Kings. You know, Swipe of the Fox is going to be looking to get out of there before. Look where the Phoenix Suns have been before CP3 got there. A perennial loser even with a talent like Devin Booker. Now Devin Booker is the next Kobe, right? You, you, you need those veterans to, to help elevate your young guys. Now Cameron Payne is going to be a hot commodity. You got Mikal Bridges, who we, we all know he's a good player. We should have drafted him. But as a role player, you know, he his game is, is automatically amplified. And so that's why I say even, even though I'd be leery to, to pay Conley and Lowry – I think, you, I think you, you should bring these guys in if they can start for you because I don't think the Rose can start for us. Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having veteran presence. We saw what having good veteran presence does. We can just take a look at D. Rose and what he did for Obi Top and Emmanuel quickly. Those him, those two guys alone got so much value out of D. Rose for someone who understood who understood the game, understood the understands the league, and just knows how to be a true pro. Same thing with Taj Gibson, a pro's pro. He's mentoring these guys. Like you need those type of guys that can help elevate these young guys play because you don't need the blind leading the blind. We don't need just a bunch of young guys trying to figure all figure it out together. That's not that doesn't work. We saw that with Phoenix. We yeah. saw we've seen that with Cleveland. And we see we've seen as you point out, we've just seen it around the league. It's just it doesn't work. We'll give a look at Sacramento. And what Luke Walton's doing out of there, they're they're not going anywhere. 
Of you know, and they're stuck in the West. So that it's even more difficult for them. You need the quality guys. I wouldn't be upset if we got Lowry or Connolly, but you need those quality veterans. You can't just have a bunch of young guys on the team. It's, it's the blind leading the blind at that point. <laughs> True. A true story, indeed. All right, a couple more calls. Let's go to um, D from North Carolina. D, what's going on? Hey, what's good, CP? How you doing, bro? Give that thumbs up for your boy. Hey, I was day. just calling because I know people touch base on it a little bit, but I think that we should actually go after Cameron Payne. Mm. He'd be a cheaper option. He'll come in, be fundamental. Then you could use what you were going to trade for Sexton, try to get uh, Miles Turner from Indiana or somebody, or even get a small forward from somebody and fill all the gaps. And then with the pick, if you get the pick, I think we should take Cameron Thomas because he's Sexton, just a younger version. Go get a bucket. Cam Thomas out of LSU. Okay. All right. So, so D's thinking a bit creatively there. Thanks for the call, man. So he's going pain and saying use a potential trade package or the potential parameters as it's being rumored right now. To go get Miles Turner. Oh, what do you guys think about that? I wouldn't be upset with Miles Turner. Uh, yeah. I think he's a good center. I mean, obviously, you got to fit there between, between Sabonis and Turner, who you're going to play more. And I think Turner seems like to be on the way out because they like Sabonis since he gets most of the minutes. I don't think the same package, though, that we're talking about for a Sexton would get you Turner, though. That's mm. That's just my take, though, on the whole matter. Yeah, me neither. I, I don't. I mean, he's one of the best defensive players in the NBA, a, and he doesn't have the contract situation that Sexton does. Yeah. yeah. And th- so there's that. And I mean, the Turner thing. What does that mean for Mitch? Like, where does that leave yeah. Mitch in terms of the Knicks? Because you can't play those guys together. No. So can't if you're saying you want Miles Turner, are you saying you don't want Mitch then? I I just don't. What I don't know what Mitch's future is going to be with this team, man. I don't know. I'd love to have him. That, that's my guy. You know, $1.5 million on, on the team option this season. What happens after that? It's going to be yeah, a big, Mitch big, is a wild card. Mitch is a wild card, bro. Big time yeah. wild card. Um, so, so we'll definitely see there. What do you guys think in the chat? D's proposal. He wants campaign and then to go after uh, Miles Turner and then draft Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas out of LSU. All right. Let's see. All right, a couple more calls, and, and then we'll wrap up. So to everybody in the chat, once again, let's get those likes up. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. If you guys work at the Apple Store, hit me up pronto after this. Mayday, this thing is on his last legs. <laughs> we did good, man. I don't know. We've been on for uh, for 37 minutes in this session, so I think that's probably the longest. I think that's the longest run we've, we've went on so far. So uh, we're, we're going strong right now. All right, book from Queens, and then we're going to close with Ari. Book, what's going on? Hey, CP, Alex Chip. So so glad to be on the call, fellas. And uh, also, CP, congrats on all your success. Thank you. So far, we're a great year. Thanks a lot. All right, man. so to get right to it, mm-hmm. uh, I love the quickly year, just to, just to get on that. The thing about all rookies this year that we have to consider is these are rookies that didn't have the same preparation with the Combine and the Summer League and the training camp. It was a mess for these really young guys, which also affects their conditioning. So really, we don't know what we got from a lot of these rookies. And people who really stood out, they might even be better than we think they are. And for that reason, I don't think we should, as as you guys said, we shouldn't define quickly. Because one of the great things that Mark Jackson and Steve Kerr did for Steph Curry was they gave him the green light to be Steph Curry. And Trey Young has had that green light this entire time. Quickly has not had the green light to be the guy who can hit those shots. And it's understandable because they were trying to improve it. This isn't uh, – they, they weren't trying to be a 19-win team that they can just have a guy jacking up shots. Mm-hmm. But until we give him a greener light than he's had, we don't know what we have. And that's the thing about any of these trades is you don't sell low on appreciating assets unless it's going to make you a contender, right? Mm-hmm. So with Sexton, he fits our window which is great. And the thing is, point guard availability upcoming doesn't look great unless we draft somebody and get lucky. So at some point, we're probably going to have to trade that position unless specifically quickly pops. Those are our two choices. Everything else is you're incubating for a quickly or whoever we draft this year. And again, point guards usually take three to four years, 
right? Everybody's not yep. John Morant. Yep. yep. Or you're trading for a guy of Colin Sexton's talent level. And the thing about both Quickly and Sexton, even though they're different versions of it, we need scorers. We need guys who can score off the pick and roll. We need guys who can shoot. We need guys who are quick. Now, Sexton's more athletic, but Quickly is more of a shooter. I like going in that direction over just about everything else. The great thing about campaign is now that he's been in the finals, he's a guy who's proven to be a worker. He can come in and be the stopgap guy. I don't care if we have to suffer with another first-round exit or two, especially after what we've been watching, <laughs> if that leads us to the promised land, right? Because the thing about being patient is all of our assets that we invested in this year are appreciating. OB was regarded better at the end of the year than he was after his first few weeks. Yeah. Same thing for quickly. Same thing for RJ, right? Everybody that we play is worth more now than they were nine months ago. And the same thing is most likely going to be true for those players. And if you trade now for a result, you're not going to beat the New Jersey Nets. Like, I'm, I'm as optimistic as the Nets guy, but that's not what we're doing this year, right? The plan this year is to improve. If you're not, you know, hitting a home run, you're, you're trading for less than what you would get in a year or two. And the last thing I would say is I think – when we keep that, those, those spots relatively open, I'm not saying to not get anybody, mm -hmm. improve as much as we can, but not sign somebody crazy, Zach Levine and Bradley Beal can yeah. be had, especially yeah, Levine, because the Bulls are terrible. They're terribly managed. He's playing with all of these great players right now, and they will be facing a situation where they have to lose him for nothing or get something out of it. And that window of timing if we have the top ends and it improves quickly and all that stuff, we might be talking about pairing Zach Levine with something crazy at that point if we stay opportunistic. The fact of the matter is, it's like buying a, you know, a, a GPU right now. Ain't nothing on the shelf. So just keep your money yeah. until new stock comes in. All right. Pre appreciate the call, book. And if you got that deal on the, on the MacBooks, man, let me know, man. I, I need a new computer, bro. <laughs> Please, man. All right, appreciate it. Book, book saying stay, stay patient, stay with it. He's willing to go patchwork with with campaign. I think I think Beal Beal or or, uh, or Levine. I think they will be realistic targets. I don't know about a trade. I'm hoping Beal will hold out and we just sign him outright after next season. That would be ideal. Because yeah, because, that'd be because when you sign guys, it's going to be important too before you max out Julius, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think both guys want to go into free agency. It yeah. feels like because if Beal didn't, I feel like he already would have pushed for a trade. Yeah. So I think he wants to go into free agency. Yeah, don't sign Levine's with Washington. definitely going yeah, into free agency. Yeah, I, I think one. I think one of those two guys will be a realistic option. Yeah. Which is why the Knicks, as, as Ian Begley has said, that you know they they want to keep the cap flexible. So I don't I don't see them going too crazy this off season either. I think both of those guys have seen what it's like to be in situations for a long time and not really make much movement. So I think they just want to have a lot of options. I don't think they necessarily have a destination in mind, but I think they just want, you know, they want options. To take a look at this way. Not yeah. 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 They want to date again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And Tibbs and Levine has the connection with Tibbs for Minnesota too. He's put them right. over before. That's so. right. It's definitely possible. I, I think it's very much possible. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't Levine praise Tibbs too? Didn't he did. He? Yeah, he, he did. did. He did right. Big time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. All right, we're gonna close the show. We made it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Ari, what's going on, man? Ari, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Good, bro. What's going on? Good. How you doing, Ari? Good. So, what's up, Alex? What's up, what's up Chip? Uh, I'm doing well, man. So first of all, that call, that last call, was amazing. Yeah, that he was, was probably good. the Book, best yeah. call. Was good. That, that was probably the best call since my call last episode. So <laughs> to you, that was that, that was that was dope. But um, listen, man, everything you said was everything you said was 100 percent right. Yeah. Like JJ called in and he said that Damian Lillard and Julius Randle aren't going to win you anything. So what makes anyone think that Colin Sexton and Julius Randle 
are going to make us win anything. Like, this is what I don't understand. And this is kind of why Jay from Florida said yes last year was like fool's gold, right? Like, we are not in win-now mode. We're just not ready yet to pull these kind of moves, man. We need to keep on adding assets, right? And that's why I agree with Book's call, man. Listen, we have Derek – assuming Derek Rose comes back, yes, he can't be your starter, but he's good for 25 minutes a game. You're going you're gonna to trade assets for Colin Sexton, who literally has the ball in his hands the whole time, who's, like, going to overshadow Derek Rose, take away shots from quickly, and, you know, just disrupt well, the but entire he's be, chemistry. Nah, but hold on, entire... hold on, hold on, hold right, we'll, on. We'll, we'll, I'm push back on a couple things. I hear what you're saying. I, I hear all the, 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 uh, the issues. But Sexton is going to start. He's 22. Okay. And it, I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. I think he's a guy at 22 years old that can grow with this team, which I think is something that, that we could use, that could get better with this team. And maybe he's a stepping stone to getting you that next superstar where you don't necessarily, maybe you don't have to give up RJ like most fans don't want to do. So I don't, I don't think you're getting sex and to say we're going to win right now. But I, I think he's somebody who, if, if he's producing at this same level and Tibbs reins him in a little bit, works on his weaknesses, Maybe he helps grow with this team and gets better over time. So we're running. So we're we're maxing. We're we're maxing out Randall. We're borderline maxing out Sexton. We're giving Mitchell Robinson twelve to fifteen million dollars a year. I don't think, right. I don't That's think what so. we're doing. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I I think Mitchell's so, gonna so, be a casual. Uh, what's honest. that? What's that gonna do for us? Are we gonna win anything doing that? That's not how you. Like we're not ready to make these moves, man. This is what we should do. We should upgrade at the point guard cheaply. Cameron Payne. Jalen Brunson. I would do a Kyle Lowry two years with a player with a team option in the second year. I'd give him thirty million dollars a year the first year, and I have a team option for thirty mil the second year. If you strike out, you pay him that. The goal is not to win a championship right now. The goal is to build to attract free agents in the future. And how do you do that? Right? You make smart upgrades. This is what the Knicks did last year. They didn't spend money on anything crazy. They signed Alec Burks. Great. They made a savvy, cheap deal to get Derrick Rose here for the cheap, right? They brought Bullock in. That was a good, that was a good signing, right? Like, they made cheap things, and we, they upgraded. We should do the same thing, stick to the game plan, draft two draft players, uh, two draft, draft two players this year, right? Don't trade OB for anybody. Don't trade OB. Don't trade Knox. Don't trade any of these guys. Just add, continue to build, and then at the deadline next year, when Zach Levine and Bradley Beal come on board, right, on, on the block, then you can trade, you know, who knows? Quickly was the twenty fifth pick, right? We, we we might get two uh, next two new two new good players. Assume we get one, then you have Obi. You have the draft player that we have here. You know you could trade Mitchell Robinson maybe and a future first round pick. You could bring in Zach Levine, right? You still have you still have Emmanuel Quickly. You still have R J Barrett, right? You don't have to make any decisions on Randall. I don't know why you guys are considering Randall like oh we got to give him the max. I don't know if you guys watch the playoffs. But I, I'm not he's counting the max. one year. He's going to get the no max, fix. though. Oh, God. I'm, he's going to get the max. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't think he should get the max. I, I think we should see how he does next year. Then give him, Then see how he. Then see what it is. I'm not giving someone the max for 80 games that he put for 78 games Let's he played in, with no fans in the stands when teams weren't allowed to literally leave their hotel rooms where half the players didn't even care to play because they were con- Turned about COVID and Tibbs out here playing every game like it's the NBA Finals, right? You think Colin Sexton is going to come in here and and Julius Randle is is going to play is have just as good of a year as he did the year before? Like, like if the whole thing is like we don't have to make a decision on Randle right now. Why can't no, we continue right the rebuild? But they're going to take care of upgrades. They're going to take care of him, bro. Cheap upgrades can if if he if he plays like he did in the playoffs, they're going to take care of him. Yes. I still, really? It's just cost of doing business, bro. They're not going to let him walk. They're not going to let him walk, and they, and there's no trade out there that's 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 worth what he's produced this past season. We'll see what happens next season. Okay, I'm saying next year, next year. If he has, if he plays next year, let's say yeah. he doesn't play as good as he did this year, but mm-hmm. not quite as bad as he did in the playoffs. Let's say he did somewhere in the middle. They're gonna, you're going to throw him a max deal at the end of that year, really? I think they still will. And appreciate the call, bro. I think they still will. I don't know, Chip and Alex, what do you think? I think they're still going to max out Randall regardless, bro. Yeah, of course. It's the Kentucky connection with Leon Rose, CAA, World Wide West. He's their guy. Of course they're going to max him out. I think and he's earned it him, with what he just did. 
I mean, we just heard on the Woj podcast when he when Woj interviewed Randall that he literally sat down with Wes, yeah. Leon Rose, asking, what do you need to be better in this situation? And he legit has his two guys in the front office running this ship. I don't think they're going to let Julius Randall just walk. And also, if they just let a guy walk like that after what he's done. You run them out that, of town. You know, yeah, then you're really setting a bad you're setting a bad look for the Knicks. So he's going to be taken care of. Will be the max, maybe not the full max. Might be close. It was it's going to be close to it though. So he's going to get paid. And guess he's he's a good what second third option. Like it's his first time in the playoffs. I'm not reading too much into it this season. Let's see what happens next season. But I still think he's going to get the max. I still think he's going to get close to the max too. Yeah, I think he's going to get it, man. So Tari, man. I still, I, I, I still think uh, my guy Book's call was a little bit better, Ari. But you're, you're a veteran, you know what I mean. Book doesn't call here that much. <laughs> yeah, I still think Book's call was better. But you know, listen, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. I don't. We'll, we'll see what happens. Will Sexton be available? Will they pull the trigger on it? Nick's Twitter, Nick's Nation has been all over this thing all week. <laughs> every show, every podcast, <laughs> every blog. That's how we doing all season vibes, man. We got to talk about it. We got to come together as a family and talk about it. And uh, I thought this was a great show. Appreciate you, Alex. Appreciate you, Chip. The debut of Chip Murphy, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go to KnicksFanTV.com. Uh, Chip, Alex, shout out, oh my God, Knicks Fan TV, Dave, putting everything together. Everybody over at uh, at KnicksFanTV.com making it happen, man. Uh, the content is continuing to evolve, so we definitely appreciate you guys contributing. And, and make sure you guys are supporting them, man. Make sure you guys are supporting them. Go to KnicksFanTV.com as usual for the latest takes as we continue on with the off-season content um, later this week. We'll, we'll do uh, one last draft Q&A. My guy Derek Murphy, Derek Murray from uh, BasketballNews.com will be here, formerly of Bab- Babcock Hoops. He's been uh, torn, torn the, the world, torn the country, scouting these players this year. So he's going to come come here uh, this Thursday and, and give us his thoughts. And, uh, yeah, man, make sure you guys are hitting that like button. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. A couple more Super Chats have come in. Let me salute Von Quan. It's a nice, nice name. Says he says he wants to draft Trey Man and Chris Duarte. Give Duncan Robinson a bag and let's go. We need the shooting. Listen, I love Duncan Robinson. <laughs> Duncan Ro- Robinson. Riles ain't letting him come to the Knicks. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. What, what was that? What was that report that he was supposed to annually make like twenty five million a year? Was that what I read? Oof. What? Oof. Yeah, I think I think someone from the athletic put that out like twenty five something something along those lines. Oh, is that the Hollinger? I he, think that it was the Hollinger, Hollinger piece, yeah. thing. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a little too rich for my blood. I mean, what Joe? Yeah. Give him the Joe Harris bag. What's Joe Harris getting? Seventeen? Yeah, I think that's, that's, that yeah. sounds more, about right. I think that's more up up his alley. Yeah, yeah that, I think that sounds about right. Twenty five, nah. And Riles Riles isn't letting him come to the Knicks. That's not happening. No. Yeah, man. Mr. William 1072 sends another super chat. He says, Do you entertain moving Mitch for Miles Turner? <sighs> Put me on the spot here, man. Turner is better right now. But is Mitch gonna be better? Is he gonna grow know. into that guy? Yeah. That's the gamble you're taking. I, I think it's like very, we said, he's a wild card. Yeah. We don't know. I, I think it's very much point card dependent, at least with Turner. Yeah. You know, he could give you some off ball splash from three, um, which I don't think Mitch will ever get. You, you know what I mean? But, but listen, he can impact the game in different ways, certainly. You know, I, I love Mitch's, obviously, the rim protection, um, his, his ability to be switchable on the perimeter. You know, give guys a fight. I thought he could have given us a big shot in the in the playoffs, a big shot in the arm. And uh, hold on, yeah. hold on, ladies and gentlemen. The closer, J Boogie. Oh man, I gotta get J Boogie in here, man. I gotta get J Boogie in here, especially Chip. This is this is your first episode, man. We we gotta get a J Boogie uh, call in here. Hang on, hang on. We we got we gotta get J Boogie in here. That, that was my fault, ladies and gentlemen. Hang tight. You got to get the close in here to, to close out the show. <laughs> it's only right. Give me a second here, people. Jay Boogie, hang tight. We're we going to you, man.
I had uh, signed out of the switchboard, but we'll get back in, man. Jay Boogie's on. Can't say no to that. If you're important instructions, press two. All right. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show. All right, we here, here we now. go. The closer. Jay Boogie from North Carolina. Jay Boogie, what's good, bro? Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's. I see I got my favorite my favorite guy up in there, the young Franco Harris, man. Salute <laughs> to you, man. Good seeing you, you know what I'm saying? What it's up, Jay Boogie? Since I've seen you aboard, man. You've been hanging out somewhere during the off-season. It's the on-season, man. We need you always putting in that work. Chip, what's good with you, man? I see you up there man, making your debut. You're dropping a lot of jewels. I need one of them chains so I can put it on my neck and let it dangle, man. And shout out to the GM, man. You CP, my man, you know what I'm saying? A great man, that is right there and super day the board man i know what it is get them thumbs up get them like buttons up man salute 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 three caps for the S. before i go any further real quick you know what i'm saying i want to send a special you know what i'm saying point to the air to the heavens you know what I'm saying rest in peace to my man biz marquee yeah, yeah, yeah. but those that don't Absolutely. know appreciate biz marquee i'm gonna tell you what biz mark is biz mark was to the rap game what muhammad ali was to the boxing game what jim brown was to the football game what michael jordan was to the nba what denzel is to the movie theater you know what I'm saying? Straight like that, man. So you got to respect yeah. salute that, man. Shout out to, you know what I'm saying, the animal, the rhyme animal. Chuck D, Chuck love D. and love and love to all y'all. Shout out to CK2K. Shout out to Ashley, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in the chat real mm -hmm. quick. I'm not going to hold anybody up. But what's wrong? Why ain't nobody talking about Luca no more? You know what I'm saying? He don't, you know, slid off to the side, man. What I see with that guy, that guy's looking for a, a position to be in. That guy wants his own team. Because where he playing that with them, them guys he playing with over there, that's not his team. So, you know, he just playing his role. Watch out for Luca. I like his on-the-ball defense and all that. Yeah. Don't keep sleeping on him. You know what I'm saying? But besides that, I want to stick to the course. Stick to the strip. Stick to, you know what I'm saying, what's been working, man. Keep getting these young guys and building and building and building. And number and number 19, 21, and 32, I'm going to give you my draft order just mm -hmm. like that because I'm down here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I know what that boy Trey Murphy is down here doing in the St. All Lund Summer League. He's tearing the court stuff. So I like <laughs> Trey Murphy. And then go ahead and give me that boy man. And with that 32nd pick, I'm going to go get another big man. Give me that boy Jericho Sims. That's three, that's three young characters that can go at this team. Now take a look at what you got. You know what I'm saying? You got you got Quickly. You got RJ. You got Obi. You got Jericho. You got all um, you got all um, you got Murphy. You got all um, who um trade man. Um am I missing a couple of other young boys? Anyway, those guys right there, that's a young course for years and years and years and years and years to come. That's I don't hear every position it is on the floor for all five of them guys right there. And let that big that big time crop come in 2023. That's how you prepare yourself, you know what I'm saying? All that going to do, do all this old trading and giving away draft picks and all that, but somebody we don't even know if we're going to keep him, to keep him there. That man, he couldn't even learn the point guard roles up under, you know, the man that killed us for a championship. Yeah, I'm talking about Avery Johnson. He couldn't learn the point, point guard roles from him. So he couldn't learn the point guard role in Cleveland. That's why nobody want to play with him, man. We need a point guard, you know what I'm saying, on this squad. I don't need no 6'2 shooting guard, man. He don't do nothing in the league to shoot two a 6-2. Nah, uh, at the wings, you got to be big if you want to be on that wing doing anything with these guys. If not, you're a point guard, you know. I ain't going to hold y'all up. I want y'all to have a great night, you know what I'm saying? Continue on staying healthy and continue on staying safe, you know what I'm saying? God bless you all, man. Peace to everybody that's watching and hanging on to the show. Two fingers stuck together. Peace. Jay Boogie had to jump back on the line and make sure that he closed the show. I didn't even see him on the switchboard. Salute to Dave for, for, for giving me a reminder. Super producer Dave, as Jay Boogie calls him. Appreciate it, Dave. I didn't even see you on there, Jay Boogie, man. Appreciate the call. Appreciate the love. So Jay Boogie says he's going, um, he's going Murphy. He's going Man. And he's going Jericho Sims at, at the five. I, I am curious to see if, if they, uh, if they do try to go get a back of five, because you just don't know what the mid situation is going to be. I don't think they they spend money on 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 Nerlens Noel. He gave us a great year. He, he held it down, no doubt about it. I don't think they go there. So it's going to be interesting to see who they bring in as a back of five. I don't know. Maybe JaVale McGee or something. Dwight yeah. Howard. Who knows, man? Who knows? 
Who knows, man? Uh, all right, people. That 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 was a great show. Let me get back my uh, my closing music, and then we'll, we'll close out with these guys once again. Thanks for the super chat, Smarty Jones. He says, "Go Knickerbockers." Rob Clark Jr. Thanks for the super chat. Um, Rob Clark also says Devonte Graham should be a trade target. Had some hype, but was buried on the Charlotte bench. I think he could flourish in New York, and he's cheap. <laughs> Fellas, quick quick thoughts on Devonte Graham. Quick thoughts, Chip. Oh man, that's the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we need to table this for another day? But go ahead, Chip. Because he, he, I'm he a huge, I'm a huge Devonte Graham fan. So okay. I'll, I'll be writing about Devonte Graham for the site. Let's yeah. go. I I love Devonte. Let's go. Next piece coming up on Knicks Fan Yeah, TV. yeah. I love Devonte. Yeah, man. And once free agency kicks off, we'll, we'll bring these guys back on. We'll, we'll talk. We'll go through positions. Um, talk about who we want, so you guys can call in there as well. And and remember, these guys will be back on with us. Uh, for the draft show, 10 days away from the NBA draft. So uh, make sure you guys keep it locked, man. And, and uh, once again, the team is expanding. The team is growing. We're bringing some great minds, some passionate Knicks fans to the team. And so we're, we're only going to get better and keep growing. So continue to support. And remember, if you guys work at the Apple Store, man, hit me up pronto. I need that info. Very important. Because I'm glad this thing took us to the end. But we're, we're on our last legs here. So uh, tune in uh, Thursday. Derek Murray basketball.com um, and uh, Babcock Hoops coming in for the draft Q&A uh, Chip just let them know where they can find you on Twitter real quick bro uh, I'm at at Chip Murphy 7 on Twitter and it's uh, Nick State of Mind podcast Nick State so, of Mind podcast thanks for having me on CP this yep. was great man a- absolutely man Alex go ahead and uh, sign out man let the people know where they can find you bro Always appreciate coming on, Chip, CP. Great talking with Knicks with you guys. Love it as always. And salute to the mods out there and Knicks Nation in general. All right. And you guys can find me over at Hoops Habit. You guys can find me over at KnicksFanTV.com. We got some great content coming through at that website. So please make sure to go check it out. On top of that, you can go find the podcast, Knicks Jets, etc., on all streaming platforms. Yes, sir. And DJ's man, will I be in Barclays for the draft? No, nah, I'll be here for the draft, man. Um, it's a good time being at Barclays, but the only thing is, is you guys know I like to live stream from wherever I'm at. Barclays is like a, a concrete like piece of junk. I mean, it's Barclays anyway. It's a piece of, piece of junk arena, but there's literally no, the, the Wi-Fi is terrible. So I, I don't want to do that again. I, I did it twice. Certain areas, yeah, you'll get get good uh, get good reception, but my sweet connect is no longer there, so you got to be downstairs with the people, and, and the Wi-Fi is just not good enough. So we'll be here with a good system, good Wi-Fi, and, and we'll have a great panel and, and a great time. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Remember, this show is brought to you by Anscape, fellas. Go out there and go get that lawnmower 4.0. Trust me, you won't regret it. And uh, check out the Performance Package 4.0 as well, man. It's a great deal. Go to manscaped.com, enter promo code NYX for 20% off plus free shipping. And also remember that this show is available in audio podcast format, all the major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, Stitcher, on the Next Fan TV. So we will see you guys Thursday, DerekMurrayBasketballNews.com, NBA 